Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture series. Today we are going to talk about uh, infinite series and its convergence. And then uh, uh, we'll uh, in this lecture uh, talk about uh, the uh, how we can use the nth partial sum to calculate the convergence and what is nth term test for divergence and uh, to uh, types of uh, series the geometric series and the telescopic series and its convergence okay so let us first see uh, what we mean by infinite series of real numbers okay so an infinite series is the sum of an infinite sequence of numbers that means uh, a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus so on plus a n plus so on okay? so it's a uh, if you have a infinite sequence of numbers a1, a2, a3, a and so on, then uh, the sum of all those numbers, okay, so a1, the first term of the sequence plus second plus third plus so on, nth plus so on, infinite sum, okay, which can also be written as summation a n, or we can also uh, write the index here as n varies from 1 to infinity, okay. So, uh, this is your infinite series so the question uh, that arises first is that uh, what is the value of sum of this infinite series or can we actually calculate this sum <coughs> uh, and if we can calculate it then uh, is this uh, sum finite and unique or it is finite or it is not giving a unique value okay so that's uh, one of the important things that we want to know okay so if there is infinite series can we add it and find the sum value okay so uh, yes of course the answer will be yes we can calculate sum so uh, the second question that arises is that uh, can we actually add infinite number of terms one by one to calculate this sum so uh, the answer is obviously no okay, because there are infinitely many terms to add and we cannot just keep adding one term after other to see what comes out okay because there are infinitely terms we can not just keep on adding term one by one and see what sum is there okay so uh, if the sum is there but we cannot just keep on adding one term after other to see what sum is then how to calculate this sum so uh, to calculate this sum uh, we uh, uh, def define uh, sn okay which is the sum of first n terms okay so sum of the first n terms which is given by or written as sn which is sum of the first n terms from this series a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus so on an okay and uh, this is ordinarily uh, finite sum and can be calculated by normal addition okay and uh, so as n gets larger okay we expect this partial sum okay okay so we just uh, want to know that uh, uh, this sn the sum of n terms is called the nth partial sum okay and uh, as n gets larger we expect this n partial sum this to get closer and closer to a limiting value in the same sense that the terms of a sequence approach a limit okay because uh, uh, with n1 uh, this will be s1 s1 means uh, only the first term a1 okay if i take n as 2 then it will be s2 the sum of first two terms s3 will be sum of first three terms so on sn is sum of first n terms so this sn forms the sequence okay and uh, when n gets larger this sequence if it converges to a value then we say that uh, uh, the terms uh, or the sum uh, approaches that value as well so let us take say one example to see this okay for example uh, to assign a meaning to an expression like this 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16 plus so on okay so it's an infinite sum of real numbers so uh, 
uh, we add the terms one at a time from the beginning and look at the pattern okay so uh, we are trying to define the uh, nth partial sum by uh, starting with the uh, defining the s1 the first partial sum second partial sum and so on okay so uh, let us see what is partial sum first okay or which is s1 s1 is only the first number which is 1 and uh, so value is 1 okay and uh, just writing this suggestive expression okay you can see later that how it comes similarly the second partial sum means sum of first two numbers okay which will be 3 by 2 which can be written as 2 minus half uh, the third partial sum is sum of first three numbers okay so if you solve this you'll find as 7 by 4 and this can be written as 2 minus 1 by 4 so a pattern is uh, generating here okay and so on if I calculate the nth partial sum s in the sum of first n numbers okay uh, which is this value which can be written as 2 minus 1 by 2 power n minus 1 so S1, S2, S3, so on Sn, it forms a sequence of real numbers and the Sn is uh, given by this 2 minus 1 by 2 power n minus 1. When n becomes large, okay, so if I take limit n tends to infinity on this is partial sum, we expect the limit value to be equal to this sum value, okay. And when n becomes large, uh, we expect this to become small and small, so this difference will get closer and closer to 2, okay. So the sequence of partial sum converges to 2 because uh, the limit n tends to infinity on this number is 0, okay. So uh, this sum is equal to 2 okay uh, uh, graphically uh, the first uh, number is 1 then half then 1 by 4 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16 and so on okay so you can see that we have one distance then half then 1 by 4 then 1 by 8 then next will be 1 by 16 then 1 by 32 then uh, uh, 1 by 64 okay so the sum of all will uh, 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 is getting closer and closer to 2 okay but it will never cross 2 so this sum infinite sum will be 2 okay now uh, so now we can uh, define this as a uh, definition okay of uh, the convergence of infinite series so given a sequence of number a n uh, we said that an expression of from this sum of a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus on a n plus on is an infinite series the uh, number a n is the n term of the series and uh, uh, for the convergence uh, we define a sequence s n which is the uh, we call it the nth partial sum and uh, it is defined as like s1 is the uh, first partial sum which is the first term s2 is the sum of first two terms so second partial sum s3 is sum of first three terms and so on sn is sum of the n terms and so on this can be continued okay so uh, and this is the sequence of partial sum of series the number sn being the nth partial sum as we said earlier and uh, we say that this sequence converges and the uh, sum of this series will be equal to that sum or the limit of this sequence okay so if the sequence of partial sum converges to a limit l we say that the series converges and that its sum is also l okay and we write that the sum of the series which can be written in summation form also is equal to l where l is the uh, limit of n tends to infinity sn okay so that's the limit of the sequence of partial sums okay so uh, we can calculate the sum of the infinite series by calculating the uh, limit of the uh, sequence of partial sums okay <coughs> now one important uh, uh, particular uh, type of infinite series uh, uh, is the geometric series and the geometric series uh, are series of this form a plus a times r plus a r square plus so on a r power n minus 1 plus so on okay, which can be written as summation 
n equal to 1 to infinity a times r power n minus 1 in which a and r are fixed real numbers and uh, a is a non zero number okay r is also called the common ratio and this ratio ka r can be positive or negative as uh, uh, in this example or in this example okay so in this particular case the r is uh, positive okay you can see the uh, if a is one and this is a r then uh, like r is half okay which satisfies the next and next and so on okay so here r is half positive number and in this case uh, r is minus 1 by 3 again a, uh, this is a negative number okay so r can take positive as well as negative numbers okay now the convergence uh, of this geometric series uh, and it says that if uh, uh, the modulus of r is strictly less than 1 the geometric series converges to a over 1 minus r okay that is uh, the sum of the infinite series is equal to a over 1 minus r uh, if uh, r lies between minus 1 and 1 with strict inequality and uh, this series is a geometric series okay and uh, otherwise the series diverges so if uh, r is equal to 1 or minus 1 or a uh, modulus of r is strictly greater than equal to 1 okay that means r is greater than equal to 1 or less than equal to minus 1 in that case this geometric series diverges so we'll just uh, take the proof of this uh, first okay so uh, uh, for the proof of geometric series if r equals 1 then uh, the nth partial sum of the geometric series will be simply this okay because it was a plus a r plus a r square plus so on a r power n minus 1 and r is 1 so it becomes uh, just sum of a, a a n times so it becomes n times a and uh, if we take the limit n tends to infinity on this then uh, limit n tends to infinity on right hand side will be uh, plus infinity if a is positive and minus infinity if a is negative okay so limit is plus minus infinity depending upon the sign of a okay and uh, so series diverges because uh, it is not the limit of the sequence is not finite okay and so series diverges uh, second uh, case is when r is equal to minus one okay so in that case you see this number will be like minus one here it will become plus minus plus minus sign okay so the series diverges because the nth partial sum alternates between a and zero okay so like it will be a minus a plus a minus a plus a minus a okay so for uh, uh, like uh, uh, n even you will get 0 and n odd you will get a okay so uh, it alternates between a and 0 values so uh, the series is not giving a uh, this sequence is not giving a, a unique limit okay so the partial sum uh, uh, is alternating between a and 0 and we say that the series diverges okay uh, for r not equal to 1 and not equal to minus 1 so if a uh, modulus of r is not equal to 1 we can determine the convergence of divergence of this series uh, in this way if we write the s in the nth partial sum okay and if i multiply uh, this on both side with respect to r so i can write r times s in and uh, each term will be multiplied with r okay and uh, so if i subtract these two sn minus r sn uh, on this side this term minus this so this second will cancel out with first third will cancel out with second so this last will cancel out with second last and i will simply get a minus a r power n okay so subtracting these two i will get sn minus r sn from left hand side and a minus a times r power n from the right hand side so i can calculate s n the nth partial sum as a times 1 minus r power n over 1 minus r where modulus of r is not equal to 1 okay so now you can see that uh, uh, if i take limit n tends to infinity on this then this number r power n is important okay when n goes to infinity uh, this number will either go to infinity or it can go to zero depending upon r okay so if uh, 
मॉडलर सो फार इज लेस दिन वन दिस आर पावर एन विल टेन टू जीरो एज एन टेंस टू इन्फिनिटी सो दिक्वेंस ऑफ पार्शियल सम विल कन्वर्ज टू ए ओवर वन माइनस आर एंड इफ मॉडल सो फार इज ग्रेटर देन वन देन दिस आर पावर एन विल टेन टू इन्फिनिटी एंड सो दिस सीरीज विल डाइवर्ज Okay, so this is the proof of the geometric series. Okay, we'll take uh, say one example here, uh, bouncing ball problem. Say you drop a ball from a meters above the flat surface. Each time the ball hits the surface after falling a distance h, it rebounds a distance r times h, where r is positive but less than one. Okay, find the total distance the ball travels up and down. Okay. Further find the total distance if ball was dropped from a height of six meters and r is two by three. Okay. So first we have to solve for a general uh, relation and then uh, we have to just find a particular solution from there. Okay. So uh, let us see what exactly the problem is. The problem says that there is a ball which is dropped from a height of a meters uh, from the flat surface. Okay. So once it reaches the surface is bounce back uh, rebounds with to a uh, height uh, rh okay so like uh, if it initially is dropping from a it will rebound back to uh, ar okay and then it goes back and so it will again rebound so it started from ar so it will like go back to ar square Okay, then rebounds to AR cube, then go back AR4, AR5, and so on. It will continue like this, okay, uh, up, so on to n tends to infinity, okay. So, uh, what you can see is uh, we have to find the total distance the ball travels. So, ball first travels a distance of A units, then it goes to AR units and comes back AR units. So, it is two times AR units. Uh, plus then it goes to AR square up and then AR square down so 2 times AR square and so on 2 times AR cube plus 2 times AR4 and so on okay so the total distance that the ball will travel is say A plus 2 times AR plus 2 times AR square plus 2 times AR cube plus so on okay so we can uh, uh, just uh, rewrite the first term is a and from the rest of term we can take two a r common to write it as one plus r plus r square plus so on okay so you can see that this term inside the bracket is a uh, geometric series with the first term as a and the common ratio as r okay so we can calculate this infinite sum as a over one minus r okay and a is one so simply one over one minus r and uh, just rewriting this so this is the total distance traveled by the ball okay and uh, in the particular case if a is 6 okay and r is 2 by 3 so we can simply plug it here to find the value okay that when a is 6 and r is 2 by 3 we can solve it and we'll see that total distance traveled by ball in this case is 30 meters okay so it's one simple example on geometric series uh, there is one theorem now that uh, if sum of infinite series uh, a n converges then uh, uh, when n becomes large a n must go to zero. Okay. So that means uh, for convergence the, sm the terms must get smaller and smaller and smaller towards zero okay so it is like limit n tends to infinity a n must be zero okay the converse is not true okay if limit n tends to infinity a n is zero it does not mean that the series will converge okay so but if series converges uh, with n growing large the terms must become smaller and smaller if that is not the case then the the sum will actually blow up okay so it will go to plus infinity or minus infinity okay but it will not converge so uh, uh, the proof of this that if we write the nth partial sum as s in okay and uh, so if i uh, write another partial sum as s n minus 1 which is sum of first n minus 1 terms and if now i calculate the difference of these two 
so uh, all the terms will cancel out except the last term so it will give me a n okay so a n will be s n minus s n minus 1 okay and uh, when n becomes large if n goes to infinity then uh, if series converges so the sequence of nth partial sum will converge okay to a finite value and similarly n minus first partial sum this will also converge because when n goes to infinity these two will represent the same series okay so if this converges to l this also converges to l okay and l minus l is zero okay so the terms a n goes to zero as n becomes large if series converges okay so uh, this is an important result okay and the converse is not true theorem above does not say that series converges if n tends to infinity a n is zero okay it is possible for a series to diverge even when limit n tends to infinity a n is zero okay so we have to be careful about this but this also leads us to an important uh, result which is the nth term test for divergence okay because it says that uh, for convergence limit n tends to infinity must on a n must be zero okay so a series diverges if limit n tends to infinity a n fails to exist or is different from zero okay so if this limit is non zero then that means series cannot converge okay so this is an important test okay so if you take limit n tends to infinity on the nth term and if the uh, that limit uh, fails to exist or that limit is non zero then immediately we can say that the series is a divergent series okay for example the uh, sum of this infinite series n plus 1 by n is the nth term diverges because the limit on this is converging to 1 okay so and the a n goes to 1 as n goes large okay and uh, so this infinite sum cannot converge okay by this test or due to this theorem okay uh, similarly uh, the infinite sum minus 1 power n okay diverges because the limit on this do not exist okay because the value is plus 1 or minus 1 okay? alternatively so uh, this series is also divergent series by n term test so this is one of the important tests so uh, for given any series you can initially check this test to see uh, whether limit goes to zero or not if it do not go to zero you can immediately say series diverges by this test okay but it goes to zero okay that then that does not mean it will converge okay so you have to again uh, use partial sum or some other technique to find out whether it is convergent or not okay now uh, uh, there are some important results uh, whenever uh, we have two convergent series okay say if you have a uh, series uh, a and converging to a and series b and converges to b are two convergent series uh, we can add term by term or we can subtract term by term or we can multiply by constants to make new convergent series that means the uh, sum of two convergent series uh, is also convergent and it converges to the sum of uh, their independent convergence values okay so sum of a n plus b n which is uh, uh, adding these two series term by term is equal to a plus v okay so that means the sum of two convergent series is also convergent and it converges to a plus b where a and b are their uh, individual convergences okay uh, the difference rule that means that we can subtract the two terms term by term and so the infinite sum of difference is also convergent and that sum is equal to a minus b okay uh, the multi constant multiple rule uh, we can multiply with a constant to the series okay and uh, uh, this is also lead to a convergent new series which and it converges to the sum k times a okay, where k is any number uh, to remember here that uh, uh, this series can converge even when the uh, sums uh, individual 
series A and individual series B and both diverge. Okay, even when these diverge, even some can converge. For example, say uh, the series A and which is one plus one plus one plus one plus one and so on. Okay, it diverges to plus infinity. Uh, the series B and which is minus one plus minus one plus we add another minus one and so on minus one minus one and so it diverges to like minus infinity but there are some if we add them these terms term by term then a n plus b and the first term added to first is zero second to second is zero and so on so it's zero plus zero plus zero plus zero so on okay so it converges to zero itself okay and uh, uh, above leads to two important results that uh, every non zero constant multiple of divergent series is divergent okay so if you are given a divergent series and you multiply with any non zero constant to that it must lead to a divergent series okay and if uh, one of the series converges and other diverges then their sum and difference are definitely going to diverge okay so these are two important results uh, and I add one remark here that adding or deleting finite terms do not change the convergence or divergence. However, it can only change the sum value of it. Okay, so if you're given an infinite series and if you uh, delete first few terms from it, okay, or you add few terms to it, it will not affect the convergence or divergence. Okay, uh, because it Convergence and divergence depends on how it behaves when n becomes large. Okay, so it do not depend on the uh, few terms. Okay, but yes, uh, if it is converging and you have deleted or added few terms, then the sum of the original series and some of this new series may be different based on what values are added or what values are deleted. Okay. Uh, this is again important the reindexing uh, of the series uh, as long as we preserve the order of the terms okay we can reindex any series without altering its convergence okay like if you have infinite series z and n is equal to 1 to infinity so when you put n 1 n 2 n 3 you can write this as a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus so on plus a n plus so on infinite series okay but if you want to uh, erase the starting value of index by say h units uh, what we only need to do is uh, replace the n in this formula for a n by uh, a of n minus h okay so if i just plug n as n minus h here I can raise the starting value okay and so you can see that if n is n minus h this will be written as a of n minus h so here n will be n minus h so take h to other side it will be n is equal to 1 plus h so we have just re-indexed uh, the starting position n as 1 plus h to infinity okay but if you plug n as 1 plus h 1 uh, 2 plus h 3 plus h and so on here it will give us the same series okay so it is uh, possible to re-index any series okay uh, to a raised starting value and similarly we can uh, lower the starting value of the index say by h units uh, if we replace n as n plus h here okay so we can also write the same series as this uh, a of n plus h so if I put n as n plus h, the starting position will be n is equal to 1 minus h. Okay. So if you plug n as 1 minus h, 2 minus h, 3 minus h, so on, you will get the same series. Okay. So uh, uh, re-indexing is uh, possible and uh, uh, sometimes it becomes very important to re-index some of the series. Uh, for example, when you solve... Uh, uh, differential equations to find infinite series solutions okay there you will require a re-indexing of this series okay and um, say for example okay we can write this geometric series n is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 2 power n minus 1 as this infinite sum and uh, we can re-index to write uh, the starting index position to any number okay this can be written as n is equal to 0 to infinity 1 by 2 power n or we can also write this series as n is equal to 5 to infinity 1 over 2 power n minus 5 
or we can even write with a negative starting index n is equal to minus 4 to infinity 1 by 2 power n plus 4 these all are just the same series 1 plus half plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus so on okay you can just plug in values and you can see that you will get only this series okay so that means we can re-index the series okay and uh, uh, because uh, we are just re-indexing the infinite uh, terms remains the same so it will not change the convergence or divergence of the series it will not change the sum value it will remain the same okay okay so one uh, last topic for today and then we'll continue with other topics of the infinite series in next lecture okay that uh, telescoping series okay so in mathematics uh, telescoping series is a series whose partial sums eventually only have a fixed number of terms after cancellation okay the cancellation technique uh, with part of each term cancelling with part of the next term is known as the method of differences okay so what exactly we mean is say for example you have a infinite series n is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over n into n plus 1 so this uh, a n which is 1 over n into n plus 1 this can be written as uh, 1 by n minus 1 over n plus 1 okay and so if i calculate the uh, nth partial sum c s in okay or uh, n is already there so i call it kth partial sum s k which will be sum of first k terms and so that can be written as because of this in this form okay so if you i just plug in as one two three so on up to k i can write this as this sum and you see that what it says that uh, whose partial sum eventually only have a fixed number of terms after cancellation okay so you can see what happens here is that the second term in first bracket cancels out with the first term of second bracket the second term of second bracket cancel out with the first term of third bracket and so this 1 by 4 will cancel out with the 1 by 4 in the next bracket okay and so this 1 by k will be cancelled out with the 1 by k in the previous and so uh, we eventually end up with only two terms this 1 over 1 from here and uh, minus 1 over k plus 1 okay rest of the terms will cancel out each other giving us eventually only two terms for this series okay so uh, the partial sum is simply 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 and when k becomes large okay when k goes to infinity this limit uh, goes to 1 okay so immediately we have that the this infinite series sum is 1 because the sequence of partial sum converges to 1 okay so the series converges and the sum is 1 that means the infinite sum of this series is 1 so this is a telescoping series okay uh, take one example uh, this example is uh, uh, based on geometric series okay so uh, say drug dosage problem say a patient takes a 300 milligram tablet for the control of high blood pressure every morning at the same time okay the concentration of the drug in the patient system decays exponentially at a constant hourly rate of k is equal to 0 0.12 how many milligrams of the drug are in the patient's system just before the second tablet is taken just before the third tablet is taken okay and in the long run after taking the medication for at least six months what quantity of drug is in the patient's body just before taking the next regularly scheduled uh, morning tablet okay so this uh, problem of calculating how much uh, quantity of drug is present in the patient system uh, okay uh, once he has started taking this medication okay so uh, it is given that uh, the tablet is 300 mg every day okay so initially on the first day he will take 300 mg tablet and there is a uh, exponential decay with a constant hourly rate of 0.12 okay so what we have is a, a model for exponential uh, decaying that uh, c equals c naught e power minus kt okay so negative sign uh, 
uh, with K positive make sure that with time growing this decays exponentially okay and uh, uh, C naught uh, is the uh, initial value that means when t is 0 c is c naught okay so Im immediately you can see that c naught is 300 mg okay and that's the initial value and uh, k is the rate of tk so k is 0.12 and um, so with this formula can be written as 300 e power minus 0 0.12 t okay where t is in hours okay so uh, the first question says that uh, how many milligram of drug are in the patient system just before the second tablet is taken okay so and it is said that uh, patient takes uh, uh, every morning at same time so if we have taken one initial tablet in the morning the next will be next day okay the same time so that will be 24 hours okay so we can calculate this uh, with t value 24 okay and uh, then just before the third tablet is taken the third tablet will be taken uh, uh, after first day will take second tablet and uh, after 48 hours will be the third tablet okay so t will be 48 hours but in this case uh, some some amount of the initial and some amount of the uh, second tablet will be there so it will be sum of two okay so we'll just see this okay so just before the second tablet refers to the first day with t is equal to 24 hours so we can calculate uh, plugging t24 as the amount of uh, uh, dosage left in the patient body which is 16.84 mg out of 300 mg is taken after 24 hours okay and uh, to calculate it uh, after two days means uh, before the third tablet so there will be some amount left from the first tablet or this uh, yeah this one 48 hours from first tablet and 24 hours from the second tablet okay so uh, we can solve this and we can see that 17.79 mg uh, amount of uh, this remains in patient's body uh, in the long run if we have to calculate this then it will be like a infinite series okay with uh, uh, n varies from 1 to infinity uh, 300 e raised to power minus kt and t is 24 n okay uh, n varies 1 2 3 so on okay so it's infinite sum and you can see that this is a geometric series uh, with a as 300 e power minus 0 0.12 into 24 and r as e power minus 0 0.12 into 24 okay so in the long run uh, we can calculate using the geometric series we know that uh, it is a over 1 minus r okay so we can just plug value a 1 minus r and we can solve it so we can see that in the long run patient you know, the amount of this uh, remain of tablet will be 17.84 mg in the patient's body okay. so there's this one problem uh, which is uh, like a real life problem okay based on infinite series so we uh, like uh, end this with some practice questions that find a formula for the nth partial sum of each series and use it to find this series sum if the series converges so given these three try to find this okay so we'll continue this uh, the infinite series topic for another uh, three to four lectures and uh, in the next lecture we'll try to find infinite series and in its convergence when the series have non-negative terms okay till then have a good day